Good afternoon, everyone. Today we are in this session. Good afternoon, sir. Let's begin with the today's session in the foundation school. Joyful mathematics. So math is a always difficult subject for some students, even we can say most of the students. Because it requires very good observation skills. <clears throat> what is the given in the question? What are the data on the basis of those data? And hint, we should find what is asked. So sometimes it is very easy for someone, but most time it is very difficult because it is not only the calculation, it is theory on the basis of facts. So facts are sometimes easily understanding, easily understandable, or sometimes it is very difficult. So we teacher should module or make the mathematics <laughs> joyful for the learning, not for the students, for each and every student. As well as we should, we teacher should focus in classroom as well as in our surroundings. That is how we module the session or module the class and how content so it is the, our duty of the teachers to make the subject joyful and now what are the difficulties in mathematics this is the basic question that everyone understands that question being asked not clearly understand sometimes we read the question at the end of the question we forgot everything what we have just read sometimes we stuck in the language of the question that is very manipulative that is very tricky and also after sometimes understanding the question we stuck in the calculation part some students even stuck at the point where answer is not at the number. Like the word games, the figure, the directions, in those questions, in like aptitude, in general <clears throat> competition, the question is the logical ability, testing questions, and direction questions. A boy is walking in the north direction, turn to the right. And then again, we'll be walking in the north direction. Now, the boy is in which direction? Or the face of the boy is in which direction? In these types of questions, this is the answer is not in the number. The answer is in the terms of language, in the words or direction, or the visualization. After we make the clear concept understanding, then we can answer those questions. So these are the also types of difficulties in mathematics. And once again, I will start saying by this that we start learning mathematics from the number. Beginning of the learning mathematics we start from number, but math is just not a number. Math is a whole concept of different different perspective different equations different solid shapes figures situations directions and many other things which is not a number but it is also in the mathematics so as we when we were teaching we are teaching the kids in the primary section we should tell them math is not a number but we start from the number now, in primary education also, 
some difficulties are large numbers most of the students easily understand that number 0 1 2 3 4 but as we increase the number like 1 lakh 2 lakh in the thousands they confuse sometimes they even confuse which is the larger number which is the smaller number so at those point in the primary section or in the nursery section the students stuck at this point should be individually given solution by the teacher now also in the figures circles triangle why it is a triangle the first question asked being, being a student to the teacher is why it is a triangle and we should approach them with why first thing logically why it is a triangle then we go with this formulas and mathematical concepts as we learn or memorize the tables 2 1 the 2 2 2 the 4 these tables are easy for someone but not for all even some students understand and memorize easily but they cannot write when they are being asked write the write the table of 30 he can clearly speak the 13 table, but he is not able to write the table. So at those points, we should focus on the writing, on the basis of the memory, we should focus to the writing content. As we grow in the class from primary to middle section to senior secondary, the one of the difficulty is the variable and the constant. Why we assume always x? y z a b c this is not also type of difficulty and in the and in secondary and senior secondary the math become more conceptual yeah it, it includes obviously it includes the calculation part but it becomes a conceptual part so we should focus on the concept than the calculation if a student don't get the concept students don't understand the concept they will not be able to solve these questions next <clears throat> we understand that why math is so difficult for someone so is it a really difficult or we may difficult by saying it is difficult like someone has already in the mindset that math is difficult we are going to study math so it already they start feeling that oh we are going to so difficult we don't understand mathematics and we are going to study again so we should clear our these thoughts that it is not pre-assumption that it is difficult first we should try we should understand we should practice we should learn then we Find what is difficult and what is not difficult. Yes, obviously. <laughs> sometimes it is lengthy calculation, sometimes it is a long, uh, long passage after we get the solution. Sometimes it goes into two pages, three pages. But it requires constant practice. It also tests your patience that to teach the solution, how much effort you can do. How much effort you can give to the particular problem? How much strategy, how much ways you can think? So these mindset shouldn't be built in the students. We should try to first find logically that should we go with this mindset or should make up the mind that we will learn it, we be in a positive, think positive. We should learn it, we will learn it, and we can solve these questions. Many of the students say, uh, first, uh, early in early classes, uh, I was very interested in the mathematics. But now, as we are going in higher classes, I'm not interested in mathematics. So, because of the 
mindset or as we face the problem the calculation part and the difficulty we lack from the our real hard work so <clears throat> as we teach the learner teach the students the number we should make it joyful everyone knows that number start from 0 1 2 3 4 and so on but when we teach the primary student we can make it more joyful by using thumb rules as you can see in the slide that zero stand as the <clears throat> close palm so they will feel the things that they can make the number not only the only in the notebook or writing they even can learn without writing they can learn in their fingertips 1 2 3 4 5 like this so it will be part of their body language it will not only be the in the books and notepad and notebook but also in the their daily habit most often we will be show someone two so we say we show them two so why because of it is in our daily habit like it shows two so by these gestures by these ways we can make it more joyful more interesting there are many different different ways and different strategies to make it joyful our next topic is when we teach the students fraction numbers so it is we we uh, we understand that number is a 1 2 3 4 5 6 but when we start fractional numbers there is a big problem in the student that is this a number 1 by 4 2 one by 8 1 by 2 how it is a number many of the students get the question in the mind so we should clear these thoughts we should elaborate why it is 1 by 4 is a number even not is it it is in the mathematical term we call it a fractional numbers prime numbers integer numbers different different numbers but how to understand that this is a number so we can make we can make a paper strip a whole paper strip with if we say this is a one it is one if we fold in two equal parts and cut those two cut the part those two parts will be the equal and half of the one so students will clearly understand that actually it was first one but now it has divided in two equal parts so we can say in the mathematical term that it is 1 by 2 and everything we can represent in the number it is a number either it is a fractional number prime number integer number and different number but it is a number similarly we can make it a four parts four equal parts 10 equal parts 12 parts and this is a number so by these strategies we can make it more joyful and more interesting for the students as we grow we see the number next number comes pi so it is a symbol actually it is not a number everyone knows that so we say the pi is equal to 22 by 7 so when 22 by 7 is a number why we say it pi and it is get the question in their mind so at those points in the early stages of the learning in the primary school middle school we cannot clearly understand them that why it is a number but we can make familiar that there is also pi song sometimes we forget the number 3.14 approximate value of pi so we forget that students forget that so we should make it more 
easily to remember that there is a pi song so when children will listen the song it will be more easy to remember it so everyone search in the youtube you will get the pi song and tell the students <clears throat> now we have we have the next variable and constant in the middle section and secondary section we start the number as in form of variable and constant so most of the students even in the 10th standard 12th standard someone has the doubt that why it is a variable we should elaborate such concept by the real objects or real example like you can see clearly see there is a two bus there is a two bus so tell the student that these two bus will not carry same number of students each day let's suppose the left bus has a total number of students 30 and the right bus the total number of students 25 so the number 25 and 30 will not repeat every day the number of students in the bus will change monday tuesday it may change so because of the number of students is changing we can say it, this is not a fixed thing we should tell them this is not fixed this is changing it keeps changing so that is why in mathematical term we call it a variable and the total number of students in a bus for this situation is a variable and rather we say x y z then we introduce them with x y z even we can call it a, a b c d but in general way we call it x y z and what is constant these two bus the number of these two bus is two so every day it is two so the number of bus is not changing the same number of bus is every day so this is the constant number of buses are so we should try to <clears throat> elaborate and tell the students that what is a variable and what is constant so next thing is i want to ask you if a person buys a thing at 40 rupees and sells the same thing at 50 rupees most of us knows that he gets the profit of 10 rupees. We didn't do the, any calculation. We didn't use mathematical formula. But we said in a few seconds that he made the profit of 10. How? We didn't apply here. Profit is equal to selling price minus cost price. Because of we have in our surrounding, we have been watching, observing that someone sells some items and made the profit, someone gets loss, and someone do the business. So, in our daily life, we observe that it is daily basis work. That is why we do not require the formula. So what it says that observation is skill based on the our environment. When we observe each thing, we get easier with them. So to make math more joyful, we should make mathematical environment. Mathematical environment, it does not mean we have a triangle in our room, we keep spheres and 
compass and protector in our pocket everywhere we talk numbers and mathematical terms no 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 it's not the same it tells the environment means recognize the math around us what are we observing we should connect to the mathematics recognize each and everything we see the table the surface of the table is in the rectangle form so we can connect when we go going we do business we should connect them and also we can make mathematics more joyful by encouraging students according to their interest each and every students have different different interest students has different interest in mathematical term someone has more interest and someone has less interest so encourage with their interest of the field in terms of mathematics by saying someone has an interest in his sports he likes to play so connect him with his play like someone is going cricket the stump is in the shape of cylinder and a small cone so he will observe that also the ball cricket ball is in the form of a sphere so he will feel the connected towards mathematics he will observe daily he will observe everywhere each and everything that how it connects to the mathematics so we can make it a more joyful for example someone has the interest in the business so business has the very good application of mathematics the profit loss business charts what is the average value someone works at the shop and he sells of different amount every day so after 30 days ask the student what is the average income of your shop during 30 days we can make more interesting by students giving according to their interest what is his interest what actually he does after the class what is his family background because it connects to that is student with the mathematics in terms of their daily work someone doing the sickness everyone we take medicines so the capsules are in the form of cylinder so we should connect these things with the mathematics everyone can see can am i audible now yes sir audible
yes so we were discussing that we should encourage student according to their interest everyone has different interest <clears throat> so we should apply mathematics in his interest so we should observe math around us how we can observe you can see the wheel uh, wheel of a cycle the spark or the metal rod connected to the center we can say this is the radius and this is form of the circle as you can clearly see there is a drum guitar circle shapes designings cubes these are the actually figures of mathematics so when we connect those students with our surroundings with our daily life routine they will feel more interested towards mathematics they can easily understand where is the mathematics actually not in the book and not as we see in the secondary and senior secondary the question being asked by the students that why we are studying trigonometry and angle we can not directly observe the uses of the trigonometry but we can even directly observe angle we should tell the students that these are the examples of examples are in each room's corner the angle form is is 90 degree so why this is a big question not in my building your building in the whole world the angle of corner of building or in a room is 90 degree so we can connect to the students that this is the 90 degree and give more application of such thing now when we go for to we visit some places connect the students with ancient buildings like temples the very you even you can see the amazing and beautiful designing and figure and different different casting in the ancient buildings if someone will go the south there is a many tourism places where these types of buildings and temples you can observe so wherever we are we should connect a student towards mathematics so it will be more interesting for them so math is a subject that actually requires very good observation very good is but in the real field in the real world there are working men who actually doesn't know he is using mathematics but indirectly he used like for the carpenter he uses the compass protector and geometry he cast 90 degree and he cuts the wood at some specific angle to fit in the table making furniture so how does he know that he did someone has studied with the practice someone did not so but they are using mathematics so we should tell the students that this is the example application of mathematics so he will feel more connected like the plumber he is using the pipes it, it is in the uh, cylindrical form the water taps he changes the direction water direction and in the building during the wiring the person walks at the cost of per 
square meter or per square foot. We know that. Even the laborers making trench. Welcome back. Sorry for the interruption. There was a technical issue. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Proceed. Please proceed. So, mathematics or math skill that is used by in real life who actually didn't study mathematics or doesn't know is using mathematics. So a person makes the trench along the roadside. You uh, most of us have seen that for the cable connection, he his wages at the rate of per square foot. If he makes four square feet the trench, he will get paid by four square feet. Only for four square feet. So actually, how does he know that? How does he measure? So we should connect our students by these examples. Now, there are some tools and techniques for joyful mathematics. The first one is the brilliant real object. The real object like football, Cricket ball, cylindrical shape, compass, geometry, these are the real objects. Example of the rectangle, example of the cube. We should take these objects in the classroom. So students, we observe and clearly see the what is being asked in the push by small projects during the weekend in summer vacation and there is a website that forms graphs of the different different equations we should connect with students by solving puzzles mathematical puzzles so the first thing is when we teach the student circumference, circle, radius, tell those students that if a wheel of a cycle is a circle, then the center will be the gear. You can see the point, the gear point, the gear is situated, that would be the center. So, the spoke connected from center to the circumference will be the radius. And why it is a circle? Many of us will ask why it is a circle? Because each and every distance from the center is the same. Not only the center and circumference, we should student, we should give students a minor project that measure the length of circumference and apply the formula is both the same answer. So he will feel 
that he has done not only in the homework in the notebook but he can observe that it is a practical based question now we also make mathematics easy by solving puzzles even with some small sticks it is available in the math lab we can make the cubes cuboid triangle the 3d shapes so in the primary and middle section when we are teaching that this is a cube so we should take these objects in the real classroom that students will feel that this is the real this is not in the figure in the book by using puzzles there is a number puzzle this is number 1 2 and we can make in a sequence increasing order from 1 to 15 by sliding so it will boost the students thinking ability it will increase his problem solving skills when he tries to solve each and every time he will not get just within a minute so by by making mathematical puzzles students and even children sometimes there is some extraordinary children at the age of 4 or 5 he solves very good math puzzle how does he do that is he a brilliant a very super intelligent he does by constantly doing practice so we should practice such things and when we make the figure in the notebook someone has very difficulty to make a rectangle even he tries to make the rectangle and he and it becomes a triangle someone makes the circle but it doesn't look circle in any angle so there is a square dot paper so when we draw the triangle uh, quadrilateral parallelogram rectangle we can use a square dot paper and there is also isometric dot paper it is a good than the square dot paper for the 3d objects like the cubes solid so, <clears throat> solid cones cylinders for these objects we can use isometric dot paper it will feel more realistic more visualization that you can see clearly in the slide that this is now nowadays this is available in the market digitally isometric dot paper these shapes are the in the three dimensions when we draw in the notebook it will look more realistic that it is in 3d form so it will be more beneficial to those students who have difficulty understanding the figure understanding the size someone being asked how many sides of a triangle he gets the confused what are the faces of a cube how many faces are equal in the cuboid these questions are very simple but the student keeps the student try the student tries to understand and live not try, um, doesn't try to understand but try to remember it so these figures we should understand when we will understand we will easily solve the question 
Next, there is a GeoGebra in the website. You can say www.geogebra.com. We should use in the classroom to make the figures. In the math lab, we will do the quadrilateral quadrilateral equations, polynomial equations. Even by GeoGebra, we can prove the Pythagoras triplets number. Pythagoras triplets number says that a square plus b square is equal to c square. So by using GeoGebra, we can show to the student it is really forming in the shape what you are seeing in the book. So there is a slide you can see here the equation x square minus 4x minus 5. This is the quadratic equation. So we calculate by that these are two real roots and unequal roots. So is it real? We can use GeoGebra to show the figure that actually it cuts at two points of the x axis. So it has the two roots. And this is the diagram. Even we can make it in the paper graph, but GeoGebra will make it more connected. GeoGebra has also the application for polynomial equations, for different equations in the form of variable and constant. Even we can prove we can prove the quadratic equation graph by GeoGebra. Now, as we go from middle section to the secondary section and senior secondary section, there is a huge manipulation in the mathematics question. In the question, it is given something and by the manipulation, we reach to the solution. And sometimes it is very tricky to understand how we do that particular step to reach the solution. So why we do manipulation in the mathematics? Because we try to teach the student we should more focus and towards the problem which is actually may occur in any situation. So by the steps of manipulation, we can reach to the solution. Obviously, when we exercise a lot in terms of manipulation in the mathematics, we can make easy understand. We can connect the real world situation to the math symbols. To solve many huge problems in a just simple manipulation of mathematics. To start a real world problem in the math equations, we cannot solve directly the real world problem. So how we are solving the questions of real world in terms of mathematics? Like I have, I have already discussed the each angle of a corner in a building is 90 degrees. So why it is necessary to be 90 degrees? This is the huge application. To make math more joyful and, and interesting, we use evolution of the manuscript. The skills each and every student has, we use in question, making the outputs and different problem at the different situation. If we find the solution directly, we will not get the solution. 
but by the steps and steps one step connected to another step another step connected to the another step and finally we reach to the solutions as we see nowadays that digitalization is everywhere so the concept of digitalization is the manipulation of mathematics to make our environment more accessible and easy for the users students share the concepts different different ideas and formulas to apply in the real world by using mathematical manipulation we can build our society stronger and more successful in future now there is a big problem in secondary and senior secondary of the concepts we focus in the solution we try to solve the question before the understanding of the concepts as we see the biggest problem in the concept is the quadratic equation in the algebra the probability we cannot solve directly we should first go through the concept so why it is necessary that concept should be understood by everybody the concept a one concept can solve thousands of questions but by solving thousands of questions the students cannot understand the concept when we say the triangle the quadrilateral the cylinder the the imaginary image in the mind the picture of that situation that there is a circle so the image of circle should be in the mind that this is the circle the definition of circle the basic necessity the basic necessary condition for the circle should come in the mind so we can understand the concept the edge of the triangle it has three sides as the cube it is a three dimensional object so these concept visualization by the student is very necessary as we know that that the volume of the cylinder is by square h and the volume of the cone is 1 by 3 pi square h if we connect the same radius and height the cone is the one third volume of the cylinder even a student should do this as a project that making the equal radius and height the cylinder is three times volume of the cone so there is a student in the line who made this project that equal base equal base radius and height that the sand fill in the cone three times is the sand of the cylinder so the student will connect towards mathematics more he will feel this is the not only the formula this is actually a fact so by this process the students will remember for long time easily understanding and there is a pythagoras theorem a square plus b square is equal to 6 so we can also prove in terms of the areas as you can clearly see in the if the side a we see we take a square of length a and a, a square of length b the surface area of these two square will be the equal of surface area of length of c 
yes even we can prove this in the form of volume the pythagoras triplets abc if we take a cube of length a and another cube of length b as you can see in the triangle that the length b has a cube length c has a cube so the volume of the larger side c will be equal to the volume of cube of length a and cube of length b so this is not the formula this is actually if we build a cube of length a and b and c and by pouring the water we observe the sum of volumes of a and b is equal to the volume of c by making our mathematics more practical we can also connect towards the history we should tell the students what is the history of mathematics how it evolved we should tell the mathematician of india we should tell the students the name their lifestyle their thoughts their achievement what was their daily activity so the great scientist srinivas ramanujan and arivatta of india gave a very big change in the mathematics even it it said that the revolutionary of mathematics are here he gave the trigonometry and the whole concept of mathematics change and the srinivas ramanujan who is known for the man who knew the infinite a man who did very very intelligent work in the mathematics some of his great work even today is not understood by the many mathematicians yes it is a provable but how he delivered it is not understood now when we teach the students the area of the circle so we can connect by this is not this is just for making interesting that area is the pi r square so if we take as a pizza that is the pi and the radius is z z so that is pi r square so this is just for the making it make more interesting we can connect to this today there is a another irrational number or we can say the golden ratio that is pi what is the pi actually the pi is the ratio of the length of two sides of rectangle to the larger side as we can say in the figure a plus b divided by a this pi is even we can say this is the unique not unique this is the great observation of the scientists we will see the phi is in the shape of any rectangular form that is the image of apple's logo it was observed that the it fits in the phi golden ratio if we make a rectangle as you can see the each section the rectangle is in the form of golden ratio even the natural things there is a great use or great examples of the nature that is in the golden ratio
we can see the sunflower a beautiful face even the pyramid the ear shape the painting it the painting was famous in the whole world mona lisa painting everyone knew that but when we observe the shape it is in the golden tissue we will see in the detail that the rose the structure of rose is in the golden tissue yes you divide each section of the rose it will fit in the golden tissue and what is the golden tissue that is 1.618 that is the approximate value is 1.618 even man's palm and from palm to the wrist it is in the golden tissue whether you are a child you are a young man you are a old man human not only man the human the human structure is in the form of the golden tissue so it was the great observation that the mathematical ratio is actually around us and someone has observed that and it fits everywhere not in the hand even in the mona lisa painting i i have already discussed that the figure the shape of her face is in the golden tissue as you can clearly see it starts from curve to the bigger curve when it was calculated it fits in the golden tissue even in the egg the egg was observed that super structure it is in the form of golden tissue the outer surface and the width when it fits the golden ratio yes so golden ratio not in the mathematics it is driven from the real world it has observed we can see the insects some flowers even insects are in the form of golden ratio when we convert that part of the golden ratio it become like this of figure figure start from the curve is starting and bigger bigger and bigger yes it is miraculous that it is in the nature maybe we didn't observe that but yes the golden ratio is one of the universal and in the human structure the total length of human body to lower part of the body is the ratio of 1.618 from shoulder to knee the ratio is 1.618 human biceps human face length human finger to elbow length wrist to elbow length of limbs distance between the two sides of eyes even the eyes are in the form of the golden ratio so this was the great that's that's why it is said golden ratio so man we when we observe these things around us we will feel and students will feel more connected towards mathematics we should tell students that each and every aspect of the mathematics here is a table Table is everyone knows that three one the three three two the six three three the nine. So we say three two the six, but actually we understand that two threes are six. We write three two the six, and we say that three two the six, but two threes are six. and we understand that two three twos are two once again i will repeat we say three twos are six and we write two threes are six 
but actually understand that theory does are sense so what i am trying to say that what we teach in the mathematics in our classroom that maybe we say something and a student understand different thing he writes different thing he catch different thing so we should catch their mind what actually he understands and even it has examples in the life from education that what we say and what we write there are some activities in the mathematics that we can do in the classroom math gives it to when we teach the mathematics not only in the rough paper but we can use newsletter by making puzzles quiz math competition and we can arrange by we can arrange some lectures by experts and here is some references that is prepared with slide from those references thank you thank you all for listening and thank you sir thank you for such a nice wonderful and knowledgeable session certainly we have got the a lot of information by this session thanks thank a lot to all the members especially once again tarik sir for such a nice wonderful presentation regarding the difficult subject of the math in very simple and interesting way thank you thanks a lot to all of you to join us thank you thank you everyone thank you sir